Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have an Abita- Oh, wait, no, that's, that's Toshiba. Sorry about that. Anyway, this is a Toshiba T130D. There was also another series of T130, this is the D designated model. And before I begin, I actually want to issue a disclaimer if you happen to find a T130 or T130D laptop. There was a recall on these. It turns out that uh, there was a defect in specific models with specific BIOSes that um, when you charge them, they could melt. It seems like a kind of a minor detail really in the grand scheme of laptop development, but I thought that you should know. If you are curious, it is affected uh, the following three types, PST3BC, PST3AC, and PST3LC. Uh, so just be aware if you have any of those three designated models, then that could be a problem. I'm pretty sure I'm okay with this one. Oh, well, uh, don't, don't worry. If you do happen to have one of those three models, um, the T130s, if it's BIOS 2.7 or above, you're good to go. And if it's a T130D like this one, so long as you have a BIOS update of 1.9 and above, you should be fine. Oh, um, I'll be right back. There's, there's something I want to get before we continue this video. There, much better. So the T130D is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill plastic laptop from Toshiba. It was kitted out with the AMD Turon Neo X2, which was the L625. Not a fantastically performing CPU, but adequate enough. It had an ATI Radeon HD3200 graphics chip inside, and it maxed out at 8 gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz RAM. Other specifications that are worth noting is it came in two battery types, a 6 cell 61 watt hour battery and a 12 cell 92 watt hour battery. That 12 cell battery with the whopping 92 watts got a thirsty battery life of approximately five hours at its peak. Other things worth noting is that it is a 13 inch 1366 by 768 panel. And really it is plastic all the way through. It has this uh, faux carbon fiber finish that is all right, I guess, if you like that aesthetic, but from the touch and the gloss, you can immediately tell uh, that it's plastic, it's not uh, textured or anything like that. The trackpad is very forgettable. The click buttons are <laughs> odd because the left click on this is certainly worn differently than the right click. We have a series of indicator lights along the bottom that will give us information like whether the laptop is plugged in, powered on, battery life, uh, hard drive access, uh, all that good stuff. And everything that you touch on this is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Uh, I wiped this down prior to doing this video, but as the video goes on, it will look worse. So let's just do a quick tour of the ports of the machine, and then I'll show you the bits and pieces you can get out of this laptop before you get rid of it. I mean, so let's do a quick tour of the ports and uh, see what we've got. On the left-hand side, we do have VGA, HDMI, and USB 2.0. Along the back, we have absolutely nothing. And then along the right-hand side, we have power, Ethernet, two more USB 2.0, our headphone and microphone jacks, as well as an SD card reader. And that is all she wrote. So very quickly, let's go ahead and point out the bits that we can remove from this machine uh, if you come across one and want to pilfer it for parts. We have two battery latches. One here just simply is pushed off to the side. The other is spring-loaded, and then the battery can be removed. This is the six cell variant of the battery. There is of course the larger 92 watt hour one. And then we realistically, unless we wanna take all the plastic bits off, have two access covers with four screws, two in each. And then we have access to our RAM. And if we move over here, always look before you leap. It turns out that those appear to be Torx screws for the hard disk cover. Let's see what size. 
All right, looks like Torx number five gets us in here. And there's our hard disk and hard disk caddy. Should this be a matter of pushing it out? Oh no, it's not a matter of pushing it out. It looks like it's actually secured with two Phillips screws here and here. It looks like four would traditionally hold this in, but on this model, only two of those are present, which is fine. That just means less screws for us to undo before we can yank that hard drive out. Yep, pull back and out, and out it comes. This is actually a Toshiba drive out of, <laughs> which shouldn't be too terribly surprising, but you never know what you're gonna find in these. So you take this out, you pop the RAM out, and yeah, that's pretty much the useful bits that you would want to save from this. Everything else can uh, go the way that I suspect many of these other machines have gone. Anyway, we will quickly put all of this back together and then we'll draw some conclusions. Boot time on this is nothing super fantastic. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't exactly what you would call a computer that's full of bells and whistles. Uh, we don't even have a backlit keyboard and a few of the other amenities that we would come to expect. Anyway, I thought we would just take a quick look at this mainly because of the quirky little habit that this thing has of melting. These are not common anymore, probably due to the recall, I would imagine. Not a lot of people are trying to save these, and it's a bit understandable. Not a whole lot redeemable, especially for a use in 2020, unless you just need something to check email and web and the price is right. I hope you enjoy this sort of video. If you do, I'm gonna leave the big four here for you. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Uh, so the next time I feature a laptop on this channel, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.